Hey, this is Commander Adel Weiss from Lave Radio, and you're listening to the Loose Screws Podcast. Hey guys, it is July 2nd, 2020. This is Loose Screws. I am your host, Ty Worsham, and I am exhausted because I have literally worked every night this week, and... Everything, everything happened this week. And apparently I'm putting Craig chat into the general chat because I'm an idiot. So <laughs> and Lark Shadow saying I'm having a stroke because that was, that was good for me. Um, crap. It's going to be one of those episodes. All right. So anyway, um, with me this evening is our audio extraordinaire tracks. How's it going there, buddy? Oh, not so bad. Per- big, busy, productive days. So you have in the notes here about a X56 upgrade. You want to you wanna go through that uh, real quick? Yeah, our good friend Chig, uh, we, we're all X56 users for some, for some reason. Um, but one of the things that I hated about it was that it doesn't have a center detent that I can feel, and I really wanted to use full range throttle. So I actually found, I think Chig was designing one, but mm-hmm. I found plans that somebody had already done it. And he was like, oh shoot. So he he printed some of these and sent me some and and wouldn't accept any of my money. Um, but I've tried it out. Basically, it's just this piece of 3D printed plastic that clips onto the throttle and then another one that clips onto the handle part. And they kind of uh, have a little friction there. And then there's a detent right in the center. And I can play in VR and know exactly where my throttle is all the time. And it's brilliant. It's totally brilliant. Loving I'm, it. I'm going to need you to share some screenshots or some pictures of those of pics oh, sure. of those with me later. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to talk about what I've been doing. So all I've been doing is working because that's no fun. <laughs> but I do want to make an announcement, a loose screws announcement. So we're going to have our next community event will be a football game. Now, we're going to call it American football and not uh, crazy uh, uh, England or Welsh football. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, But no, uh, anyway, so... uh, Nobody knows why you're saying this stuff yet, so push on through. I know, I know. (laughs) So so here's what we're going to do, all right? Um, We're going to land all of our ships on the planet Midoran Hollow, and we're going to place them about two kilometers apart. And someone, because I'm going to need a volunteer, is going to be the referee, and he's going to drop a cargo container onto the surface, and then SRVs are going to scoop up, and then the first person to take it to the ship wins, or to their ship and deposit in their ship wins. You can't shoot anybody, but you can ram them. And if you have, so are they going to be like in a circle? We can have multiple participants. Yeah, yeah. Okay. put everybody in a circle. Maybe, maybe like a like a square or something. You know, we'll have to kind of work out some some details on that part. Um, but yeah, that's how we're going to do it, and it's going to be like a football thing. I have a, a gift for first place. Um, I'm working out some things for second and third place. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, the gift for the first place uh, will probably be a Steam game because I get those for El Cheapo. Um, or I'm working on getting an arcs thing, but that may not happen. Just depends. Any rate, um, but you can pass the ball. Like if you want to team up or something, you can pass the ball to another player. Um, however you want to do it on that. Uh, or if you want to work out to where, you know, the four of us are in it or four people mm-hmm. are in a team and we're going to split whatever. That's fine. That's up to you. You can make your own teams. The whole idea <clears throat> is that we're going to play football with a cargo container. And this is kind of a spin on your uh, uh, Super Bowl thing that we never really got a chance to do. Yeah. Hopefully it'll work better if it's a lot less complicated. Yeah, and, and like, I felt like we kept making the other one real complicated, but this one here, like I said, no shooting allowed, just ramming. Um, I, need a, I need a volunteer to be a photographer because I would like to play. And I need a volunteer to be a referee because if I referee, I'm sure someone would say, oh, the collusion, collusion. So, uh. <laughs> Well, maybe I was about to volunteer. Maybe I would be not allowed to. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think you should be cameraman, though, if you're going to stream. You'll need to be in a ship overhead so everybody can see. 
Yeah, but then everybody's going to see like the nose of the vet. No one likes to see the nose of the vet. So, you know. <laughs> oh, can't, you can't bear to fly something else just for a second. Exactly. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. So, all right. So that's, that's our, that's our big announcement this week. So uh, we're going to create a channel in the discord underneath the events for people who want to sign up. We don't really need signups, but if you have ideas there on how we could change it, modify it, whatever, post it there. We're doing this July 31st, 8 PM central time. That's a Friday. I know the English people are, that's like 2 AM there. I'm sorry. Move to Texas and we can all be happier and wear masks because <laughs> that's what we can do now. We can wear masks and be happier. So, and you can buy guns. So, you know, all this, everything that has happened in the last three months has only taught me that I need more ammunition. I'm just saying. So, okay. <laughs> this evening is kind of a special evening. We are joined by uh, Commander Psykit and Commander Mal for the win from the brand new Flight Assist podcast. How's it going this evening, guys? Hello. Yeah, it's going great. Psykit got up, or I don't know if she's actually been to bed, but she has not been to bed. It is like 1.30 there in the morning as we're recording right now, so thanks for sticking out with us. I appreciate it's all good. that. This is kind of the time when we record, so it makes not much of a difference to me. Cool. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, that worked out pretty well. So if you, we've been kind of talking about this um, all week. Um, I think it was... Oh, uh, was it Witch Space where I first heard about you guys? I think it was That's Witch when Space. That's I first news. heard the name. Possibly. Because yeah. um, I know Commander Bird, Commander Rennie were talking about y'all over there. But I think it was Witch Space News where I first heard about y'all. Um, but uh, we were talking before the, we started recording. Um, I've actually been listening to Mal for years and didn't really realize it uh, <laughs> until. Because he's been doing World of Warcraft stuff, so. Uh, we go back way, we go, we go way back, brother. <laughs> That's right. For the horde. Oh, Just have to get that plug in there. I, for, I forgot you're a hordy. God. <laughs> I do a lot. Of, I do a lot of Alliance stuff for a horde guy, though. I'm just going to say, because <laughs> most of my friends play Alliance. So you kind of have to, you have to suck it up and do what you got to do. You know, I, I understand those game. references. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I understand those references. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I understand from context. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the, the best place, the best way to find you guys is flightassistpodcast.com. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the easiest way to find us. And then from there, you should be able to get to everything else because there's a, there's a Twitter and there's, you know, um, all that other good stuff, but it's all, it's all linked from the website. So how did you guys come up with this idea? It's an oh, interesting man. story. We, but I think I think I will let Psykit tell this because she tells it better, much much better than I do. <laughs> so we had a we were talking um, for ages because we um, we decided that we were, we wanted to work on a project together and we wanted it to be something that the pair of us would um, have us our own rather than being sort of because um, we both stream um, rather than being like Mal guesting on my stream for a little bit and then me guesting on Mal's stream. We wanted like our own, we talked about wanting our own little baby. And um, initially it had such a different format to the, the format that it has now. Um, yeah. they, we had, we talked about doing a podcast and then we were like, yes, let's do a podcast. We'd done half of the, um, all of the art. We decided on the name. We decided on everything. And then we just sat on it for three weeks. And I honestly think that that was the best thing that we could have done. <laughs> um, just Very sitting true. And, <laughs> sitting and just going, okay. And we spoke to a few people. I spoke to... Um, I, I spoke to sort of friends and family sort of in um, in the Elite Dangerous world, outside um, outside of the Elite Dangerous world, people who had experienced some podcasting and all of that um, sort of malarkey. And um, we came back to each other and went, OK, we, we were both very, very acutely aware that we needed to simplify our, our ideas and go, yeah. OK, if we're going to do something, we'll do the thing that we're really good at. And that's just talking to people. Yeah. So that's yeah. what we decided we were going to do. Yeah, it was interesting because we both had the same perspective that we wanted to do something that would kind of focus more on 
the the like the good aspects of the game and the things that we enjoy in it, the things that other people enjoy in it. Cause whether you like it or not, whether you're, you're continually frustrated by the updates cause they're not giving you what you want, or you can't wait to get in the cockpit every day. Something keeps bringing you back to the game. And we realized that something was probably a little bit of just the community around elite. Mm. Um, and, we figured you can go anywhere, uh, well, not anywhere, but you, you'll you find your, your favorite sources, but you can go many different places to find out how to do engineering, to find out what the Guardian grind is, to learn about mega ships, mm. to learn power play, like tips and tricks for the game um, and, and stuff like that are, there are definitely many different takes on that and many different sources, uh, but there we couldn't find a whole lot of who are we as players? Like, who is Commander Mal for the win? Who's Commander Ty? Who's Commander Trax? Like, who are the people that we enjoy playing this game with? And we thought that would be the best way to focus on something good, I guess you could say, around the game that we could pull out because there's very little of the 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 in-game politics that happen with is the is the update good or bad did they respond quick enough um do you know is is activity x really more profitable than activity y cuz like those are great discussions and we love having them but we wanted to we were trying to figure out how to do something a little different in this kind of like after being away from it for about three weeks, we were like, gosh, I miss talking to you. I miss talking to this, you know, about this podcast. And we were like, that's what it needs to be. Yeah, is that's it. Us it talking was, it was to each other about what we like. Yeah. And initially it was part of it. It was like, yeah, and occasionally we can maybe have a chat with another commander or focus a community. And then we were like, <laughs> you know what? That's the one thing that we both really were excited about doing as yeah. opposed to um, all of the other bits and pieces that you can find that information everywhere, you know. So we were like, OK, we we will focus on this, thinking yep. that we'd probably get enough interest in people wanting to be on it that we'd maybe put out one podcast every two weeks or something. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> the, the rather, response has been overwhelming. <laughs> Well, yeah. it's it's good to to land on something that you actually truly want to do, mm. um, because otherwise, yeah. who knows how long you'd take to burn out. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I find interesting is that there are you know you got Lave Radio, you got Loose Screws. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there are a number of. There's probably others. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's only two I'm listening to at the moment. So <laughs> there. Uh, I don't have time for much else. But anyway. Right. Uh, yeah, there, there's there's a bunch of shows that kind of do the same thing, and there's a bunch of pot or uh, uh, YouTube channels that kind of do the same thing. So for you guys to focus on the commander, man, that is such a cool idea. From I really wish I had thought of it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, it's taken now. I know, I know. <laughs> I have that feeling all the time. I'll go into somebody's channel on Twitch or I'll go to somebody's YouTube or really listen to a podcast and be like, man, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So the world so, of content creation. <laughs> so so what you guys do, you guys like, and I, don't, I can't remember how many questions you guys come up with, but, you, but every single episode you guys ask commanders the same, what is it, 10, 15 questions? Is that right? Yeah, Around pretty much. That, it, it's been building. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we keep getting suggestions from listeners about like, hey, why don't you ask about this? Or, uh, you know, and sometimes they're very pointed questions that we have to, we're like, the the theory behind this question is good, but we need to dial it back so that yeah. it's not leading. Um, because, the, right. you know, it's it's like, like you can obviously, from listening to the first couple of episodes, you can, like, we obviously enjoy some uh, Ashling Duvall power play, right? However, <laughs> we don't want to ask the question, how much do you like Ashling Duvall? Because that's, you know, the, you can't, if you say, oh, I don't like her at all, like, you know, you're still leading. So the question became, you know, who's your favorite power play leader? Who do you like to pledge? Yeah. If, if all other things were equal and there wasn't anything that you had that, well, I really need to go to LYR because I got to have some pack hounds. If you wanted to just, if you could pledge to anybody for eternity, who would it be? So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a constantly expanding list, and and we're we're one of the things that we're we're looking at now is how do we make those feel more organic as part yeah. of the conversation? 
Yeah. Oh, I, I think, think you've done a great job so far. Yeah, I well, I guess I guess what I've, what I've listened to you, though is I guess you guys interviewing each other. So I guess you have a little bit of a cheat mm-hmm. code there. Yeah. That is true. I, th- I think um, the f- we've been sort of like constantly trying to get feedback and those kind of things as well. So um, we, we're definitely um, even sort of like four or five episodes down the line um you can you can tell the difference from the first episode and yeah it's it's yeah. been it's been such a learning process yeah it and really I has. honestly didn't realize it was going to be quite quite the learning process that it is but it's been mm-hmm. super fun and you know like do doing actually having like me and mal having this project that we've both worked on together and it's proper labor of love and we, I'm I'm super proud of it. Yeah, agreed. You should be. Yeah, you well, guys have you. done. You guys have done a great job. And and you know, I <laughs> the other day I went back and listened to my first three episodes. Like this was a couple of weeks ago. I went oh, back don't do that to yourself. Yeah, they're bad. They're really bad. <laughs> I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm still like like because it's like I started this not with the attitude to make money. I started this attitude like I just want to do this to have fun. Like I'm trying to explore my creative side for lack of a better way to put it this is girlfriend talking to me you need to explore your creative side because you have one you don't never use it and i'm like i'm too busy killing things so um, <laughs> the pew pew is happening please <laughs> but it, it she she thinks i need to do it so i did it and i'm having a blast doing it and you guys have done really cool things do you have anybody coming up that y'all want to announce that should say, hey, we're next episode is this person or anything y'all um, want to? Depending on when this comes out, we have... <laughs> tomorrow morning. Comes yeah. out tomorrow morning. Okay, <laughs> perfect. We have Warlord 383 on the next show on yep. Monday. Then yep. the following Monday is um, Bruce Garrido from Frontier. Oh, yep. awesome. Fabulous. Yep. And then at some point... At some point in the next month or so, we also have an interview with Sally Morgan Moore coming out. Yep. Oh, neato. Which cool. I'm really looking forward to. Yep. I've had, it's been a bit of a slog. We've been DMing on Twitter for blinking ages, trying to get yep. um, uh, all of our schedules to line up. And we finally found somewhere. So um, it's it, the recording is happening and I cannot bloody yeah. wait. We've I know, also, I'm so excited. We've also recorded with the Burr Pit. Yep. Which was mm-hmm. wonderful and flintlock engineering. Yep. And then we've got a got fair a handful few other, scheduled, um, yeah. other lined up, but um we're we're sort of uh slowing down after after next week, which is a bit mental, we're slowing down with recording. Um uh because we don't want to be too forward in advance, because what if something happens in the game and uh-huh. then we've got yeah. We're, we're talking to people about, oh, what, what are you looking forward to? And that's already been announced like a week ago yeah. by the time it comes out. So, yeah, we're just but yeah, easing up a great. little bit. But we've got, it. it's just like having that nice amount of um, interviews that we've got where just in case, because um, I have I have a lot of like um, physical problems. I suffer with chronic pain a hell of a lot. Um, Mal mm. has stuff that goes on. So if something yep. was to happen that we were out of action for a couple of weeks, we can still, between the power of us, manage to like crack something out um, because we've got that there. So that was really important for us to do as well. Indeed. Yeah. um, Well, since you kind of brought it up, well, well, I mean, when you guys talk to Steven, you need to get his cheese guy. And that's what y'all need to do. Because when when we talked to him uh, last week, was it, I think? We uh, we discovered he has a cheese guy, and who would have thought it would have been Stephen Benedetti would be the most cultured guy at Frontier? So, <laughs> I mean, doesn't everybody in the UK have a cheese guy? I'm joking. See, we don't. This we'll would be a di- well. I was about to say <laughs> this would uh, be a discovery for us. Yeah, I was, I was about to show my ignorance. I was like, God, no, do we don't. Have, we don't all have. Why a cheese don't guy? we have cheese guys? <laughs> we should we have more cheese have, guys in the US. There are places that we can go to specifically for cheese, but we don't have cheese guys. <laughs> I feel I like that should be a worldwide thing. We should we should work on making cheese guys a worldwide thing. God, I wish Chig was here. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be really mad. He missed this. I know. I know. <laughs> he's he's off kayaking somewhere. He'll be back next week. But but anyway, yeah. kayaking is good. Yeah, I, I I love doing it. Uh, I haven't been in years, and apparently I'm not going to be able to go without a mask for quite a while. So yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, uh, I'm not bitter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> get off on a tangent here. Sorry. <laughs> um, Bruce. Yeah. When you guys talk to Bruce, um, uh, you need to, uh, I'm trying to figure out something I can say to Bruce between here and there that he could say on there just to, just to, just to, just to mess with y'all a little bit. Just to bit. mess with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, well, let me ask you guys this question. So y'all kind of brought it up about, you know, what's coming. What are y'all excited about that's coming? I mean, are, from what we've seen of Odyssey, do you guys like what y'all have seen so far? Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, cautiously optimistic is a good way to put it. I'm so for me, like I, I'm one of those those odd like outliers who I really don't care if I ever get elite feet. I mm-hmm. I play this game because I love flying a spaceship. Right. I've got my X fifty six on the desk. I just ordered my monster tech mounts for my chair. I could not be happier when I'm in the cockpit flying. If it gets added and it added adds something to the game, that's great. But just having that new engine running the game with those beautiful visuals, mm. that's almost enough for me. That's almost enough for me to be like, sure, I'll shell out another 30 bucks or whatever. 50, 60, 80. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> Those of us with multiple accounts are really going to feel that here, aren't we? Oh, um, crap, I forgot about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to... I'm looking forward to it. I don't want it... I don't want it to feel like I have to shoot things. Like I absolutely have to shoot things. I hmm. like the idea of being um, like some kind of sniper support person, but I don't necessarily want to all of a sudden have like a massive first person shooter on my hands, that kind of thing. So like the content of the missions, like making sure there's diversity in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's my, my sort of, if, if there is a section to a mission that involves me having to shoot something, that's fine, but give me some stealth as well. Or give me, um, give me something where I just have to go up and like find a waypoint and do reconnaissance or something along those lines as well. I'm just like a, a nice, um, a nice uh, spectrum of things to do would be bloody lovely. Ta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> you know, that's something we haven't even talked about is, you know, when we when we get to Odyssey and they start doing the walking around stuff, are we going to have different, uh, like, different things to do besides just, I mean, what we've seen is people walking around carrying rifles. One of them looks kind of like sniper-ish right. and one looks assault, assault rifle-ish. Assuming they went with rough designs from the uh, Elite RPG. Um, but if you, you know, we haven't talked about, well, is there going to be something to walk around and do a trade or a mining thing? Is there going to be something to walk around and do like an exploration thing? Like, will yeah. there be something where you can like tap on a rock and get like a like a, a soil sample and then you can take it somewhere and do something with it? You know, we don't, we don't know yeah. anything. That would be awesome. I would love we that sort really of early days, interactivity. So. We're super it, early days. It's, it um, would be really out of place to be combat only. Yeah, as I much think as so. that's yeah, a big part of the you. game. Yeah. See, when, see, when you have such a big, um, a big focus on like exploration and all of that sort of malarkey, and um, big, while there is a lot of combat, there definitely needs to be needs to be um, extra elements. It would be nice to be able to land on a planet and instead of taking an SRV to scan a data point, what if you had mm-hmm. to do a stealth incursion into a base? Oh, holy crap. I'm to go all like over get that. data, mm-hmm. to get information. You know, I mean, I would be all over. That would be like new bread and butter, folks. Let's just go find yeah. all the places we can go in and steal things. <laughs> like, or what if it's like, what if you could hack into something and turn the base turrets on the base? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Or even you could hack into something and turn their turrets off to make it easier for other ships to attack. Yep. And that's right. easy to get in. You could be like in, in your little black cat suit doing somersaults all through the, oh, man. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we, we now really we're them to be, to be I'm combined. I'm living my James but... Bond fantasy right now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, we we have we've officially tipped the boulder from the top of the mountain, and Sakit's running running with it. So. <laughs> it it's so good. It's so good. I'm I'm there. I'm there. I've played enough EDRPG to know this is what I want to do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's, it's funny, bro. Like I, I just got the books the other day, and I've been reading through them, and and I'm, I've been kicking around starting up a separate EDRPG podcast, and um, I got a couple people I've been talking to, and I I just need some time to do another podcast, but I don't know when the hell I'm gonna have time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'll happen as soon as they add those extra two days to the week they've been talking about. I'm really <laughs> looking forward to that right. uh, IRL expansion myself. That'd be really nice, right? <laughs> uh, you Come. know. It, is it going to slow down aging as well? Because that would be really helpful. That would, that would oh, also cheers. be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Dilate time. <laughs> well, we, um, I, I, I think that's about it, all, everything I wanted to ask you guys about that. Um, I appreciate you guys coming on with us. You guys are welcome to stay for the rest uh, of, of everything. But I know it's like uh, nearly two o'clock in the morning. So if you want to go to bed, psychic, go right ahead. I'm going to have to go and do a nap. One of those yeah. sleepy type things. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and do a uh, cook a dinner for a wife for the win. You need to come to Texas to cook me some food, Mal. Come mm-hmm. on, brother. I can do that tonight. Tonight we're having uh, we're having filet with roasted potatoes and some uh, roasted broccoli. It's going to be good. Yeah, I'm, I had a bowl of cereal because I had to do podcasts. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got to always make f- time for food, Ty. It you got to do it. it. You got to do it. <laughs> it was Cocoa Pebbles and it was delicious. <laughs> okay, yep. well, I mean, if it was delicious, yep. that's absolutely fine. And Cocoa Pebbles, you can't go wrong. You really can't. You really can't. Uh, be sure, you, if you guys haven't subscribed to uh, Flight Assist Podcast, I think it's available. Like, I think I'll listen to you guys on uh uh, Apple, it's either Apple or or uh, Google Play. I can't remember now because I have both. It's last Google time Play, I was I listening. Apple wasn't ready yet. Yeah, so. Apple is not ready. It takes okay. uh, takes a few weeks. So we're hoping we've yeah. submitted. We've yeah. got on the we're on the website. We're on Spotify and um, Google though. Yeah. Um, YouTube and Alexa. And like, uh, you can and, do the Alexa, Alexa and YouTube. Yep. And a lot of like other fancy places. Places that <laughs> like I've never we heard of. The, like the the anchor thing where it it says it's like you're on 17 platforms and three of them you've heard of. Yes, <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Congratulations, you're now on you know third rate podcasts. You know, which is a pirated <laughs> podcast app that runs out of some <laughs> island you've never heard of. And I'm like, great, great. <laughs> You know, super. Why? <laughs> you laugh, but I'll guarantee you, 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 you'll do this for a while. And what'll happen is you'll get an email from someone and say, "Hey, uh, for whatever reason, you guys aren't listed on uh, podcast sounds dot pirate radio dot com anymore." I was like, yeah, "It's, it's I, the I'm only not? one I use because of insert political reason here." <laughs> yes, there's, yes, we've actually we one, we, we got one, one of those. Person. Yeah. <laughs> We got one of those. Oh, you're week not on this one. one particular website that I use, <laughs> but we're on every other one. <laughs> Just please, please open Spotify. Just open Spotify. It's right there, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, crazy. Uh, anyway, well, I appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, of course, thanks so much for having us on. Well, we absolutely. definitely would like to have you guys on uh, on Flight Assist and get your get your take on why you like being in the cockpit too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, 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 I would definitely do that. Just message me whenever you're ready for me, brother. Excellent or for tracks, or I mean, you know, chig or for we're, tracks. We're gonna, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, if you can't, you know, whatever. Or for tracks, or, you know, <laughs> if you want to, you get, yeah. Hey, hey, seriously, do me a favor, like, like. Do me, do tracks, and then wait a few weeks and just like don't even talk to Chig. <laughs> just your <here> time. <laughs> He's gonna be like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I already feel bad about the way this went down. <laughs> anyway, all, right, all right, thanks, guys. Before you go, I have yeah. one. Other, one more last question. I yeah. need a favorite. I need a favorite cheese from both of y'all. Brie. Oh, that's a good one. Brie. Yeah, it's brie. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> all yeah, right. If, if we if we get to quantify it, it would be brie with roasted garlic. But if it's just straight cheese, I I gotta go with good old fashioned. American cheddar. Hoorah! Ooh. <laughs> Just a good sharp cheddar. Like the sharper, the better. It should hurt my face when I eat it. Sharp cheddar. <laughs> if it hurts your there face, it's still not sharp enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway. Well, thanks so much. Um, it was great having you and um, great to have another member of the family uh, of YouTube, of, of uh, I was about to say YouTube, of, of elite dangerous content besides YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. It was great Thank being you, here. Thank you, Chase. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> so, news this week. Um, the only real news thing that I was aware of is the fleet carrier patch this week, which mm-hmm. uh, fixed a bunch of things. Uh, it fixed my paint, so I'm really happy it fixed paint. Right. <laughs> um, but then it seems like it broke a bunch of stuff, too, because it it seemed like it broke the shit out of the BGS. Um the, I, I think I've been too, I, I've hardly been in game, and I think I've been too busy to notice something breaking the BGS, but apparently the BGS is just a punching bag since fleet carriers have come out, huh? Yeah, and it's weird, like the fleet carrier itself doesn't even affect the BGS, not directly anyway, but I can tell you right now, we've been using it to fight wars, because we'll just, you know, use them for large landing pads and stuff, so I guarantee you it's, right. it's having an effect, Um I mean, the other day I saw where uh, I think it Dubs, he he was store he's been storing uh, LTDs for a couple of weeks now on his fleet carrier. He had I think yeah. he had what two or three thousand I think. The the big sell happened last night. Yeah, he it was, was like moving two, multiple two, loads of like seven hundred at a time. Uh, I, I think total was like seven or it was a uh, two and a half. Excuse me, two and a half billion is what he ended up earning mm-hmm. off of it. Something to that effect. <laughs> and he Not just a waited bad for haul. the. Yeah, he just waited for the market to swing back around, you know? Yeah. So you can't tell me it's not having an effect because when things like that happen, it you know, you sell a bunch of things to a uh, a station somewhere, you know, that's affecting the BGS whether you realize it or not. And I know talking to uh, Hate and Nergal, um, what little bit I could this week, uh, they were saying that, like, it was kind of like half a tick, and uh, uh, like it was kind of half a server tick. Some things happened, some things didn't. They had some things set up to to change and roll over, but then they didn't. And hmm. uh, I don't even know what all. Even I wish I wish hate was here so you could elaborate for us. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I don't mean, like. I know they had uh, some things set up in Bumber, some things set up in V seventy, and something in Comma that. Basically, it completely fell through because this tick didn't happen the way it was supposed to. So okay. we know. Well, yeah, I, I was. Yeah, I mean, I, I was coming in here thinking those. You know, I wanted to make sure I call those guys out because they've been doing such a fabulous job, and there's always uh, fun stuff to do in the standing orders channel, mm-hmm. and things seem to be popping off. Um, I. I didn't realize there was an issue this week. That's how calm and collected they are about it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they, they did a great... I'm actually looking at their feed right now, and there's a thumbs up and a thumbs up right next to it. It just made me laugh, so... <laughs> anyway, um, probably the, the, the fixed... The other thing that I was kind of noticing about the patch notes here was the... Surface and subsurface deposits on asteroids will no longer immediately respawn when re-entering the instance or switching to a ship-launched fighter. Yeah. yeah. Apparently people, I mean, how do people even find this shit? To, <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. It's, so, so I guess um, maybe maybe correct me or something. It's, it seemed like somebody pretty quickly found that if you menu log, it would pop you up like so many clicks above the ring. Um, but you'd be directly above the same rock and it would be repopulated with subsurface. Uh, and then at some point, somebody tries their fighter, I guess, and apparently just switching back and forth to the fighter was good enough. Um, so money was made. Uh, no big deal. Um, but it's fixed now. No yeah. more No more of that. Uh, I just I would love to talk to one of these people who figure this out and just go, how the hell did you think of that? Because I never you mean my the players. Life- yeah. Yeah. Like, cause you, you know, at some point someone said, Oh, what if I do this? And it will respond this way. Who thought of that shit? <laughs> like there had to be a first person to go, Oh, okay guys, here we go. And here's the forum post or whatever, or here, Hey, I'm going to show this person, this person, show this person. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you get the idea. So it reminds me of when like the weird 
clipping bugs what happened in World of Warcraft. Hey, man, look, if you stand at this wall and you turn this way, you turn that way, you do this spell, you do that spell, then you jump up down and you uh, hold your foot the right way, you can pass through the wall. Yeah, that, like, like speed run stuff, like they figure out how to do a speed run in like Fallout 3 or something and there's a, a certain place in the vault you run and like jump into the corner a few times and you'll pass through and then suddenly you're like, significantly further and yeah like how do you mm-hmm. figure this stuff out that's insane yeah but anyway um they fixed that stuff the other the, the other few other things that i thought were they fixed were that were pretty cool um the limpets not being restockable at a fleet carrier glad they fixed mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. uh positioning uh near stellar bodies with high signature orbits to where they won't go crazy that's good uh, fix an issue with bookmarking fleet carriers, which I haven't noticed that, but apparently some people were having oh. it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. My, mine all seem to be working right. Yeah, I must add, I got dubs. Oh, uh, Data got a fleet carrier today, by the way. Uh, oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I so. They've really kind of changed my mind. Um, I was, I mean, I get it. Like, I got how cool they were at launch, and I've been liking using them, but... I don't know. I'm kind of inclined to save my pennies a little bit here now. Now that I've kind of seen it all go down, I, you know, the convenience of it, and and uh, I don't know. You know how down I was about. Well, I I wasn't down. I wasn't disparaging anyone from grinding the money, um, but I was not planning on doing so myself. And now I'm sort of like, well, shoot. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I maybe I grind some uh, maybe I grind some diamonds. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm actually going to do so. Little. I'm actually going to do a little grinding over the weekend myself because uh, I like mm-hmm. to get about a billion safety. Because right now, I'm right now. I got a billion safe. I like to get like two billion safe. Yeah, as, far as yeah. money goes. Anyway, um, so that's where I'd like to be sitting because I'm. I'm not going. Oh, I'm not going to say I'm hemorrhaging money, but I'm. I'm clearly losing. I went and looked at my NAR, <laughs> and it's just steadily going down. You know. Yeah, it's uh, draining. I mean, can, yeah, I mean, you can tell where I bought a fleet carrier because it plummeted, but anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the, the thing I turned off, and I'm and at, right after I get through recording, I'm going to go jump it and completely uh, get rid of is the secure warehouse. I'm not doing anything with it. It does nothing. I can't imagine a scenario in which we need it. If I need it, if there is some scenario, like BGS scenario, where it actually will be useful, which I can't really imagine, I can always jump, get it, and jump back. Yeah, so, it's it's a spe- right. It's a specific use case, um, yeah. I guess. Or you know, if you just want it someday for that particular play style, um, then it's cool to have your own. Um, yeah. I think that's a little bit more Han Solo than just doing it at random stations. Yeah. Uh, and that I appreciate. Being more like Han Solo is, I think, a worthwhile endeavor for any human. Hoorah. Yeah. So I support that. But yeah, it's going to save me $2 million a week. $2 million a week. I said $10 million. But $2 million a week. And uh, <laughs> I think it'd be good to, to you know, I think it'd just be good to, to get rid of it. So uh, anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the other thing is they fix paints. With fleet carriers, I'm very happy about yeah, they that. Were instancing all wrong, kept like re- or I guess it was only certain colors, but they seemed to be popular colors because everybody was having trouble. Yeah, the the three paints I have for my fleet carrier, all three of them were doing the same damn thing. So I was like, oh, oh, okay. wait. yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. Well, I guess technically, I, I technically I have two paints. I have the default. Yeah, the default paint, and then like a black and a, and a tactical white. Tactical mm-hmm, ice, mm-hmm. whatever the hell it's called. I got those. So I guess those are the three I'm counting. But it kept going back to the default one. So oh, okay. Pissing me off. Pissing me off bad. Um, the other thing I thought was really cool. They, they Rich fixed people the, problems, man. I, tell me about it. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. First, <laughs> look, that is first galaxy problems right there, okay? <laughs> first. That's <laughs> Ashling Duvall problems. <laughs> <laughs> These slaves. <laughs> <laughs> These slaves keep repainting my fleet carrier the wrong color. <laughs> it's so hard to find decent help these days. What's funny is, isn't she the one that's like, stop slavery now, stupider? And that, like, oh, our, our, I don't know. I, I haven't paid attention. I am think I, that's her. Am lore. I a complete jerk? <laughs> I think that's, I think be. her lore is that she's like the one in the. Uh, she's the one imperial against slavery. 
Yeah, I think so. Or she's leading the charge anyway against slavery. So anyway, <laughs> um, they removed the superpower faction logos from fleet carriers. So now you can uh, sport your Nautilus build without having the ugly uh, uh, Empire Federation. logo. Ugly nope, Federation. No, nope, nope, uh, ugly Empire logo on the side. I think you were going to say Federation. I just think then. I was going to say say Empire, but my brain farted on the word. Okay. So. Got it. Anyway, so that's things that have been fixed. I'm very happy with the things they fixed. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it it seems to be going well. And and the other change that that went out there that wasn't necessarily a well, I don't know. I, I think it kind of was a bug fix. It wasn't really con considered that because it wasn't like something being reported. But um, the balance change to the average price of a bunch of things. Uh, particular, particularly hit was the low temperature diamonds. Um, I think the galactic average was just set way, way too low. I'm mm -hmm. um, considering the very high price that they would be at some stations. It just made absolutely no sense. And um, that's not really an issue, except that fleet carriers commodity market prices are, are based on a percentage of the galactic average. So it screwed everything up. Um, but so all of a sudden we saw carriers offering to buy low temperature diamonds for like 2 million, which is still higher than the highest sell price I've ever seen. Um, I don't know if that was for real or if it was just like a, an artifact on an aura. I didn't bother to check, but yeah, it's, it's updated and they changed how quickly you can scroll through those uh, menus as well. Cause that was still, uh, uh, even though like transferring credits to and from your carrier had been changed to work quickly. Uh, the, that other thing, like, um, the commodity market markets. Yeah. yeah, so that that scales better now and you can actually just like get to it quickly and basically just just finding the the finishing finding the idiosyncrasies of the new menu systems yeah. and stuff. So Yeah, you know, this is going to go this is another credit toward um I'm going to say, you know, Bruce and Steven and uh Tim and now author Arthur they, um, you know, they, they've kind of done the shift with uh, Frontier and Elite with regards to the way that they communicate with their uh, player base. You know, they take um, uh, feedback and they pass it on to the developers and they take developer information and pass it on to the community. And, yeah, you know, Will and, you know, uh, uh, Paige and... and uh, Gosh, I'm brain farting on his name right now. Uh, anyway, there, there's there's been other community developers that have done that in the past, but there was definitely a dark period there where they didn't really communicate. And mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to see that they've done a 180 on that, or it seems like they have anyway. So, well, the, it was it was definitely their intention. I, I the more I hear about it and hear kind of from them and see what's going on, the more I think it was really just. Um, staff. It was just they had a lot to do, and they were mm -hmm. spread a little thin because now there's there's so many. I feel mm -hmm. so managed. I don't know. I think I actually said that. I, I just popped it into my head now. I said it just now. I definitely said it to Stephen the first time we talked to him, and I'm embarrassed about it. So I'm just going to keep talking <laughs> until somebody cuts me off uh, so. about that. So yeah. Yeah, and uh, Arthur actually joined our Discord today. I was actually gonna wait till next week to to hit him up, see if he wanted. But he was he hopped in here. I'm not sure where he found the uh, uh, link, but he <laughs> hopped in here and it's not a secret Rudd. link. No, I know, but he was <laughs> like 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 I saw him join in. I was like, holy crap! He just found the link and like well, I mean, so think about that for a minute. All right, so a community manager at Frontier decides these guys are cool. I need to go and get into their Discord. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he may have done this with other people. I'm sure he did. But it's cool that he picked us to do that with. Because, you know, it, it takes some doing to find the link to stuff. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's not busy. a hidden link. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's you know, that is their job. They're, they're, I'm sure there's some way they have to account for their time, just like with any other job. I mean, you wouldn't know that, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I I count my time. Otherwise, I'd have I'd have no idea how to bid projects. <laughs> I'm kidding, but 
<laughs> but anyway, so I mean, like, I know, just, he's... no, sorry, that wasn't going to be a good joke. It was going to be very bad. I back yeah. away from it gracefully. <laughs> so you know, he 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 went out and found found her link, joined her Discord. And was like, hey, heard this was a good Discord to be in or something like that. I was like, dude, that is so cool. I mean, that <laughs> Power is just, move. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So um, I think right now we're missing Tim and Art from our. Uh, uh, FDF from having them, up. having them be actually on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to get Tim and Art on here, and then we need to have a great big round table with all four of them, and then we can form Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> that takes uh, that takes a lot of concentration. It's going to be tough to align our schedules, but I think it'll be worth it. Yeah. I that's, do. Uh, that's something we need, to, we need to see if we can work out. But anyway, but um, so... Let's get down to the knit, knit and gritty this week. Oh, I don't think I said this at the beginning of the show, and it's weird to do this kind of like 45 minutes into the show, but I'll just say it real quick. Chig is off. Uh, Chig will be back next week. Chig is like off kayaking somewhere. I think I said that while we were talking. You, to, you did, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm remembering it now. Like old, <laughs> tubing, uh, tubing, I think. I yeah. think he has an annual tubing trip. So, you know, when when this if this podcast keeps going, then we'll we'll have to say this again someday. Uh, right about 360 or so days from now. No, you're thinking about it all wrong. Because what we need to do next year is we need to go <laughs> up there, go tubing with him, and then we can all be on crappy Discord uh, internet. <laughs> on our phones on the yeah, lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we need to do. I'm down all for right, that. All right, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. all right. Live from the field. Live, live from an Earth-like. Yeah, yeah. I have to be outside. It's been a while since I've been outside. It looks scary. Oh, not me, man. I was cutting the lawn today. Actually, I was doing battle with the lawn because it was like 95 degrees or something. Uh, <laughs> it was not It was not fun. I really, I, I'm the kind of person, like, I wish I could, uh, I wish I could, like, I don't know, kill my grass and just, like, spread wildflower seed in my yard or something and just be done with it. Uh, that's what I would like, but my neighbors would be mad. So have you thought about, and I'm, I'm completely going to, we're getting a lawn chat here is what we're doing, but <laughs> um, this is not our discussion. Topic. I don't have we're a, I don't have a sound it. bite for that. <laughs> Why don't you? Uh, anyway, so we're, we're, um, I've actually been kicking around the idea of going to a rock yard like they do out in Albuquerque and in New Mexico and all that. So okay. they, they, they have like water shortages out there, right? So they can't really like water their lawns and stuff. So a lot of yeah. places out there have gone to like these beautiful, intricate rock gardens. And mm. Oh, right. Yeah. They have like, you know, some cactuses and, you know, in there for like some green and stuff, you know, and some, you know, cacti actually have flowers too. So they, they're, they're beautiful every now and then. And, yeah. um, yeah, but there's some really intricate things, and I'm like, why don't we do this in Texas? This way, I don't have to freaking mow. I could. This is like a totally set it and forget it kind of yard. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I need to look into this. Yeah. I think that it would be against my uh, the neighborhood rules. We all have to oh, yeah. agree on what our yards look like. Apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, but whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. See, see, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link you a picture here up in uh, uh, crew chat. Just for uh, just and see, I think about Chig will actually get this, and he'll be like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is a good one here? Um, anyway, so Elite Dangerous talk, but before we lose listeners, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so the thing I wanted to talk about this week. So we've talked about changing payouts for professions. We've talked about mining changes. We've talked about changing the economy as a whole. But something I, we haven't really kind of touched on is should Frontier do some kind of full reset with the economy with Odyssey, with the release of Odyssey or even before it? F- full reset. So so tell me what you're thinking about about this. What's a full uh, reset mean? So, so, and so I, I thought about this. And like right now we have people with billions and billions of credits – who have been playing this game for a while. And we have people with hunt with thousands of credits that are on the lower end and who just kind of started playing. And then we have people who just started playing the other day and immediately got into mining and now they have a few million. <laughs> right. What, what I'm talking about is, so I think about with like World of Warcraft, 
They haven't done a gold squish in World of Warcraft, but they've done a stat squish where they've changed the the stats of items and of d- damage and all the other things to where instead of having 500 intellect or 500 strength, you have 50 intellect or 50 strength. So effectively, it, it, it's it's visual. Like it, it means the same thing to gameplay. From a, well, it's the numbers behind it. There is a change, but the play, like the way it plays, is is still the same. Like mm-hmm. like if you cause three percent damage to to something before and after the squish, you're still going to cause three percent damage to something. Yeah, versus yeah. so so kind it's, of it's I'm, it's so that it's it's saving zeros on the screen, but it's not changing anything else about the game. Effectively, right. Yeah. So kind of what I'm leaning toward here is what if they did some sort of economy squish from the point of view of like the people who have billions and billions. Now, before people mm-hmm. go and completely, you know, burn the torches at me and stuff, because I knew this was going <laughs> to be a thing. I, it but would what have you're to saying be, doesn't change anything. It just changes what it looks like. Right. And, and, and so give, kind of give you an idea. Um so the price of a uh, anaconda, I believe, is one hundred and forty some odd million. It would be fourteen million. Talk, talk about it in language people would understand. A, a low temperature diamond sells for between one point five and one point seven million. So suddenly they would sell for uh, one thousand five hundred, right. and it would be the same. It's right. basically you just lop a couple of zeros off the end of everything. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the 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 where that comes to, becomes a problem is anything that is like in a single digit, right? Um, well, so 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 kind of go. The whole reason behind doing this would be to kind of reset the economy a little bit to where values actually some things who don't have value actually have value again. Some things that uh, you know it, mm-hmm. it would kind of reset you know uh, the mineral economy as a whole, it, it would do a lot of things like that because you extrapolate, if you were to kind of adjust like the galactic averages a little bit and you extrapolate it out a little bit, you know, over the course of time, the economy would kind of adjust itself and there would be new things that would be valuable and there'd be new mm-hmm. ways for professions to earn money, new ways for things to be valuable. There'd be new, like, like getting a $3,000 bounty seems more valuable all of a sudden because yeah that would this, could become a big deal. Well, okay, so so I think I was st- still misunderstanding you then because if it's if it's just visual, if it's just uh suddenly, you know, credits are worth a 100 times more than they used to be and everything costs or the other way around? No. Right. I, I no. It, anyway, yeah, yeah, if we lop a couple of zeros off of everything, um, stuff that costs a thousand now costs ten, and and credits likewise would would reduce similarly. So everything would have the same value. But if you're saying that it would change the economy, then some something else has to be a part of it, right? It wouldn't just be everything's the same, but the numbers are shorter on the screen. Well, and so to kind of go along with that is like the lower lower end of the spectrum, because you know going back to the wild level, not the wild stat squish the lower end of the spectrum, you were a little bit more powerful at the lower levels than you were at the high levels because of the way the actual math played out behind the scenes. So mm-hmm. a level one character now wasn't was not more powerful than a level you know one hundred character or whatever. But the way that the uh like the 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 rate at which you did damage was actually higher like one through twenty or one through thirty or whatever it was. So you would actually kill things faster than you would be at a higher level, even though they had the same percentage of hit points. So it's 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 okay. a little weird. So the so, that's weird. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird, but it's on a curve. The idea is that way. You know, the initial start off air, initial start off is a little bit faster, but then as you get closer to in game or whatever, it takes longer. It, it, it's it, you stretch it out a little mm, bit. It's graduated right. exponential or something. Right. So if you took this in the term of payouts for professions, you know, so, and I don't know how the hell they would even balance this. There'd be a lot of math behind the scenes they'd have to do, but like mm-hmm. someone, in, you know, someone who's been playing the game, someone who has five, excuse me, a, a thousand credits to their name 
is going to get more from a bounty payout than someone who has a billion credits to their name. So it would sort of scale, like, if I already have a ton of money, it becomes a little harder to make money. Effectively, yeah. Which is completely, you know, against capitalism and everything I stand for. But <laughs> you're I mean, gonna, this, you're gonna I know I'm gonna I'm gonna get this so shit this bad, week. Dude. I know I am. <laughs> you guys, hey, are you all listening? It's not me this time. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It, it's it's just one of these crazy ideas I had. I had this idea like Tuesday night at around nine thirty at night while I'm sitting at work, and I'm like, oh shit, that's a great idea. And then at some point, my brain goes. Well, that may not be such a good idea, but you know, <laughs> like the the idea behind it is, well, what if they scaled it a little bit better to where it would fit, to where it would feel better from like a gameplay perspective versus just that. And the other part of this is if they were able to change the economy and kind of, you know, zero it out for lack of a better term and kind of smooth it out, then we might be able to get, because, uh, okay, so if you're going to introduce a player-based economy and we're actually going to be able to do things like trade modules or even trade ships that we've engineered or whatever the case may be, which I think is coming. I'm still of the mindset I think that's coming. Even though they've told us no plans. No plans. That's fine. I know. I still no think plans something like could that. still mean it's coming. It's no I big know. deal. I know. Well, I, I'm not saying it's going to come with Odyssey. It might be a patch after Odyssey. Anyway, you know, I still think it's coming <laughs> at some point. Um. The the I'll get into the reasons why I think that this is going to be a thing later. But the whole thing there is that it's 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 a the way the economy is right now with like you know players like Shan, other players who have like twenty, thirty, forty, fifty million or fifty billion credits. It's a situation where if all of a sudden they can buy all these engineer modules for a mm-hmm. couple hundred million or whatever the case may be. You're you're immediately devaluing it. So if they were to do some kind of economy smoothing thing like this, they would put value in those things. So if mm-hmm. they're going to do some sort of player based economy, and again they haven't said that, but I still think it's coming. Yeah, I think I think that they would have to do something like that. And I think that if they're going to do it, doing it with Odyssey or right around Odyssey would be the time to do it. Yeah. And so I mean, really, what we're talking about here is power creep. Right, which is right. a problem or a problem of, of varying degrees for any game that lasts long enough, right? So uh, I actually think this game has done a rather good job of it. I mean, the credits is that's the the big thing. Um, the way the rest of the game works, it's not it's not been a massive power creep problem. You know, there's still good reasons to use small ships and stuff like that. As far as like game effectiveness, it, it's not like like I'm I've never played World of Warcraft, but I'm assuming it's like other RPGs where like you know the battle power from when you're reaching like end game levels is ludicrous mm-hmm. comparatively. Uh, so. I mean, that's the kind of power creep that we're talking about, right? Like, so, you know, when you're starting off and something is is dealing damage in the tens, and then later it's dealing damage in the billions, uh, there's no there's no comparison. But But the trouble is, if you keep adding, in a game like that, if you keep adding content, and the content is new guns, new armors, new ships in this case, or whatever, if they always have to be better... If they always have to surpass, then that's when the power creep takes over and it becomes like, well, every every new thing that, that comes out is going to, there's going to be a question, right? Is this one of the ones that makes the last three things obsolete and now we have a new meta or something? And mm-hmm. I think Elite has successfully avoided that. Um, and I've actually, I had a more complicated answer for why. And as I've been talking, I made up a new answer. It's much more elegant, and it's because they don't... The thing that we're buying with our money is not ships and stuff like that. It's not engineering modules. It's cosmetic. So there is never any reason for the new thing that they introduce, the new feature, to suddenly become this massive meta-changing thing. It's not going to be the new combat ship to rule them all. And then until the next one comes out, they don't have to do stuff like that. It's it's cosmetics. Even the fleet carriers, I mean, fleet carriers are kind of like 
the they're the hot thing, of course, and and they're awesome. But you can still play all the same game loops and stuff. And I don't own one. I'm still participating. Uh, and really, it's it's not changing anyone's battle power. It's it's adding some fun. It's adding some convenience and things like that. But it's not changing anyone's ability to complete missions really in 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 a way where they suddenly have a massive advantage over other players. Um, and so they, we just haven't had that kind of power creep, I, I guess, besides besides credits. But um, e- even that, I think, you know, we were just having a discussion the other day in the Discord about how it's easy to lose track for, for people who do have, like, billions of credits you know the the comment that that credits are essentially meaningless and it doesn't even matter how much ships cost because they don't cost enough for it to matter um and that's what fleet carriers are for and like yes i agree like there's a segment of the population the the experienced players who ha- are wealthy credit wise uh do need something to sink their credits into but there's still tons of players all the time in the discord channel here that we're interacting with and they're asking us how to unlock engineers and stuff that, and, and how, oh, ship build advice, and oh, I can't afford that ship yet. And you're talking about small and medium ships. And so that really kind of, that answers the question, right? It flies in the face of uh, of the comments about like credits are meaningless. Well, they're really not. For a massive segment of the population, there's still a consideration. You know, there are still people buying ships that can't afford to do all A-rated modules right now but they're buying the ship anyway. And that's something I've not thought about in ages. So there's a wide, wide demographic. Um, I'm, I'm, now I'm trying to think how I'm going to bring this back to to your point or anything, but I, I don't know, man. I think you're going to get hate mail. <laughs> well, so, I mean, so just for, like, I guess just for conversation's sake, like I don't necessarily yeah. think that this is a good idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm strictly, I'm strictly saying, hey, what if they did this? You know, and mm-hmm. if they did, how, how could they do it? There could be some clever way, right? That I, I don't know. It, it would be complicated, but yeah, it seems like there could definitely be some kind of clever way to. I, I think it, it would need to be rolled into a squish, like you're saying, uh, if I'm understanding it right, where really we're just like lopping a couple of zeros off. And the only thing that would really affect is like, um, what is it, food cartridges or something that sells for 40 credits. Yeah, something like if, that. If the minimum is 100 credits for everything, you can just delete two zeros from the entire game right. and nothing changes. And if you, if you do that, um, that might be a good time to introduce other changes. And I, you know, they might be introducing changes kind of on the stealth um, as we go. I mean, for for one thing, we were noticing last night with the, like you said, Dubs was doing his, uh, the big sell. <laughs> uh, he and Data both, they had saved up a bunch on a carrier and they were bringing them over and I think Chig sold a bunch too in in truckloads in excess of 600, which by our math should have put them into the range where they were receiving a cargo size penalty for that commodity. But it didn't seem to be happening. So even though I think they what was it? It's 10 percent or something was how how the math worked out. Where basically if you if you exceed 10 percent of the demand with what's in your hold, you you get offered a lower price. Slightly mm-hmm. lower price. It didn't. They got the same price as me. You know, I went and sold two hundred, and they went and sold six hundred, and we got the same price. And that shouldn't have happened by that method. So I don't know. I'm sort of feeling like I wonder if they, with this patch, they snuck in some adjustment to the way that worked uh, without us knowing about it. So they could be making other changes. And, and I think these changes are complicated, complex too, in that they something is changed at a low level that ripples out through the whole galaxy and has its effects. And what that so, means is complicated. So you actually kind of got me thinking there a little bit because like, you know, so I, I've been saying for quite a while now that ever since you were, you were on the clock back and go all the way back to, uh, oh gosh, what was it? I think it was December no, it was it was the January. No, it was the September update. We got to go back even further, back all the way back to the September. 
when they did that great big update and it broke the whole freaking game. No, oh, the and, arcs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the arcs. When they started doing that, there was a bunch of BGS things that they put in. That Yeah, then, new system states and everything. Yeah. And every every patch since then, they've kind of done a little bit more. And I, I've been looking at this, and in the back of my mind, I've been thinking, we're headed for a great big shakeup. Like, this is stuff that they're putting in place to kind of test out before we get to the great big shakeup. Hmm, could be. Which is really the thing behind this whole question, like this whole thought process in my head. Well, what if they're going to do a great big shakeup on the economy? And mm-hmm. well, what does that look like? Because originally I was thinking, you know, player-based economy. I'm still kind of thinking player-based economy, even though they've said they're not going to do it. Um, no. Said it's not on the map. Right, right. Said it's not on the map. <laughs> yeah. But so so I, I guess probably a better way to put it is if they're not going to do a player-based economy shakeup, I still think they're going to do an economy shakeup and, you know, doing the whole thing where they kind of squish it down is a bad idea because clearly that was not a very well thought out idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, then well then, what's the shakeup they're going to do? Like, what, what are they what are they headed for with all these little changes they're making? Uh-huh. Or what do you think they're they're headed for? Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm hoping it's it's more fun with aliens, I guess, because I I feel like that's been uh, dry for a while, mm-hmm. um, and it was a fertile ground. Um, but I, I, I'm not I'm not sure. Like I I don't know if system states necessarily suggest that, but um. Hmm, let's see. And then we did just have that gal in that article. What did, what did we decide we thought that was related to? Is that just a new commodity? Yeah, that's what it was. So it's just yeah. a new commodity might might end up being nothing. It's hard yeah. to say, man. It's hard uh, to it, say. I, I'm still in the mindset that that, that uh, the Vatadine stuff is not just... Because, I mean, they, they started talking about Vatadine stuff back in December, January patch, like six, six months ago. So it's a long thing, yeah. I mean, it would be yeah. very cool if it was if it did turn into something greater. Well, um, it, like, for sure. in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking, well, that'll be like their seed for us to be able to walk around and do these things. And I still kind of think that. And mm-hmm. it'd be cool, like, like you know, well, these are the new Vatadine Rimlock suits or whatever. You know, I think Rimlock's actually a brand, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, these you know we'll, we'll have our Rimlock suits for the ship, and we have our Vitadine suits for the whatever. Or we have our Vitadine pills we take to heal us, or Vitadine yeah, yeah. nano machine, yeah, whatever. I like them know? as a healing salve. Yeah, you know, or, or you know, maybe a maybe like oh, this is the thing that lets us run a little faster while we you know avoid being shot at or something. You know, uh-huh. I don't know. <laughs> I think I. I, I it's it's not a stretch to think that they're going to do something along those lines. I don't know what it's going to oh, be. Could, could could be, yeah. And we're I, kind of I, getting off. It, well, well, whatever. What, what's the discussion if we're not speculating? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the whole point of why we're doing the discussion stuff is because you know we're we're trying to figure. I figure we're trying to just you know we're not necessarily saying this is how I want it to be. We're saying, hey, what if they did this? See, I'm trying to I'm trying to temper my hate mail for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it it is it it's an exciting thing to kind of consider. Um, and and I do it, it's funny, you know we we talk about uh, what people think of Odyssey, like we were asking the guys earlier, um, what how excited everyone is and stuff like that, and and I do find myself excited by the sorts of things that we were talking about and that they were bringing up, you know, um, co- combining aspects of it, of on foot within the, in the, uh, SRV and in the ship and so on. Um, I think it'll be really, really cool. I, I still have to kind of temper that in my own mind because I'm going to struggle if it's not, um, VR compatible, uh, just, just personally, but, I don't know, you know, if all that kind of comes to pass and we are really like, you know, we're doing those missions um, where we need to sink it, sneak into the base and you need to take down that shield so that the SRV can drive up the ramp and now the SRV doesn't have to do that by themselves. Now the person on foot can kind of handle it and we're having these kinds of multi-role 
things go on and stuff that that's all really exciting. And I, I would be super excited about that. And I think, yeah, you are going to need other items, uh, you know, in, in game, uh, I don't know, heels or, or whatever. I get that's starting to feel a little arcade when I talk about it, but it, there's, there's something, there's going to be something and maybe, it, maybe it'll just be something totally novel and new that we haven't seen already. And maybe the, the, uh, nano meds or whatever they are, are just a rare commodity, but, um, it's, it sure is making us think about a lot of stuff. It, it just reminds me of, of the puzzle solving and stuff that went on early in the Thargoid story where players were just discovering and actually like solving the mysteries of, of things. Um, you know, more of that, please, I guess. Yeah. And you know, um, you know, Chig, Chig had on his notes here that he would love to be a part of this. So he could, so he's going to be, he said, I would love to be a part, a part of, so be ready for me to bring it up again next week. Mm-hmm. So we're probably going to discuss this, discuss this a little bit more next week. But I think if we're going to wrap it up and bring it back around to the front, I, I'm not necessarily saying that I want them to change the economy. I do want a player based economy. I think that player based mm-hmm. economies are better for games on the whole. They do have some issues. They do have things that need to be watched, etc. But I think that on the whole, yeah. they are better for they are better for games. Now, that being said, uh, you know, doing like I said, where they they squish everything down. Yeah, I'm convinced it's not necessarily a good idea. It's it's a bad <laughs> idea, but um, I still think with the BGS stuff, I think that we could be headed for some sort of economy shakeup um, because we don't even know what kind of profession stuff that running around on the planet is going to bring to the table. Like, uh, I mean, we could have a whole there, new way to get LTDs or something, you know? Yeah. Or, well, I, I think more likely just a totally new thing, not, yeah. not a way to get LTDs, but a new, a new thing entirely that you can only get that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely, there's definitely going to be something new um, that, we can't really imagine. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, th- we could probably imagine, but we have no way of knowing how right we are. Um, but it, it will, and and some of it will be emergent. You know, some of it will be just what the players are doing. Yeah. As as happened with the fleet carriers. Yeah, and you know, kind of on that note, I'm still continually impressed by the number of things that people are coming up with their to do with their fleet carriers. Um, mm-hmm. I saw the other day where people are uh, basically they are they are uh, they're running a ferry system from somewhere in the bubble out to the Guardian site to farm up either like like one week they're doing uh, uh, and maybe we should do this one week they're doing uh, blah, 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 the Guardian fighters and the next week they're doing uh, mm-hmm. Guardian modules the next week they're doing Guardian weapons. And you can park well, on your fleet somebody, carrier. Somebody in Discord is planning to do, I think it was Lark Shadow. Yeah, I, I want to say it was either, was it was it Lark Shadow that was doing it? I was, I was thinking it was Crash that, it, that took his, I can't remember. I don't know, it was, very, it was early in the morning when I read it, I think, but yeah. I was like, sign me up. I, I don't have the fighters yet. Yeah, you need to get those, brother. <laughs> I know, I'm planning on it. I think it's going to, I think the plan, will, in fact, hey, here's another community event for, for, uh, after the after the um, Maori expedition uh, goes off, mm-hmm. uh, I think that was the plan. Yeah, to to get on a carrier and go out to the Guardian sites and just group unlock everything. Yep. Yep. Sounds good to me. Yeah, and probably we should start doing that. Like, like maybe I, maybe we need to do that once a month thing where we. Uh, like this Saturday, I'll move my fleet carrier from here to here, and we're going to leave it here for a couple of days and let you farm mm-hmm. up Guardian stuff, mm-hmm. and then we'll be back kind of thing. So, Yeah. I don't know. Just ideas. Anyway. Them game. Anyway, that is all I got. I have worked my rear off this week. I am off tomorrow, and uh, I, I barely got to play any games this week. My plan for tomorrow is to mow the yard early in the morning 
and uh, followed very closely with um, I'm, I'm going to be redoing my vet a little bit. Uh, I know everybody cares about my vet, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they do. Uh, they do. I have uh, data. Show me. Um, I, I, I talked with uh, 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 DTUA a little while ago about shield stuff and he was telling me some things and then I looked at data's build today and I look at Dove's build today and I'm like, you need to go get better, Ty. Get good, get good. Well, your, sh- <laughs> your vet shields are not up to snuff. I bet mine well, don't pass muster either when we're using down to earth's numbers. Yeah, I've actually, so Dubs and Data have figured out ways to surpass his numbers. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I'm actually going to be using uh, a uh, hybrid of their two builds. So thanks, guys. And especially thanks to Data because he passed it on to me. And I started drooling. I was like, I need those numbers. It must be beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah, that I, I, I plan to be doing that uh, today or Actually, as soon as we get done recording, and then tomorrow, because sweet, yeah, I have no plans this weekend. I got to make a few uh, survival Walmart runs, and apparently, I got to do it in masks now. So, <laughs> 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 I really don't even care about wearing a mask. I just think it's dumb. We have to enforce it. So, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, that yeah, that's the thing. Is that if the if the battles between I should be able to make my own choices, I, I kind of I, I flip that around on you and say, well. I don't think that the chefs at restaurants should be able to make their own choices about whether or not they wash their hands and their tools <laughs> when they're making That's my food. And I think you, you're, you you know, I, I support your liberty right up to the point where you're about to infect <laughs> me with a potentially deadly disease, in which case I don't support it anymore. So yeah. anyway, let's all let's all be careful and we can get through this as a species, right? We just like deal with this for a little while longer and then things will... You know, we'll figure out a, a vaccine or something, and we'll go back to treating it like the flu, where it kills a small number of people each year, and we mostly don't pay attention to it and argue about whether vaccines work. You know, yeah. that would be that would be nice to go back to that in, instead of this. So, right. So, but anyway, <laughs> I think that is going to uh, wrap it up. Unless you have anything else, I do not, sir. Yeah, kind of a short episode this week because Chig wasn't here, so we blame Chig. So yeah, um, anyway. is it short? Wait, what's our time? Like an hour and fifteen. Not, not that it's not short. that bad. Not We're that fine. Bad. We're yeah. fine. Um, I had well, something else I wanted to say. Uh, I'll, I'll just I yeah, just want to shout out um, <laughs> shout out the faction people again. Um, NL Hate and his lieutenants, uh, Devo Luder and Nurgle. N- how, how do I say it? I've never said it out loud. It. I've literally read the guy's name a hundred yeah. times. I've never had the need to say it, and I feel terrible now. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, don't, I never figured out how to say your screen name. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, they've been doing a fantastic job. It is so awesome to wake up each morning and and check the check the Discord and see like all of us kind of working together for this fun that we all get to have together it's just just so cool so cool it's like happening in the background while i sleep and y'all y'all are wonderful and um come join us if you're not here yet yeah um and on that note so so sidebar here i've been saying nergal and so whenever i read books and or an or a story or whatever and i see someone's name that i have trouble pronouncing in my head their name is like steve or tom or Tim, <laughs> like the, like the immediately Team becomes, style. yeah, like, <laughs> so, 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 uh, Nergal has been Nate for like in my head for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I don't think I've ever talked to him on voice or anything. So no, I, uh, I don't think I have either. So, so we have Nate and hate running the, uh, running the, <laughs> <laughs> Nate hate and Devo is what, what we got. So <laughs> <laughs> Nate hate and Devo put it on a shirt. Yep, Nate hate Devo. Anyway, um, <laughs> but I, I, just, I, I, I feel like an idiot even saying that, but I, I, I do that with uh, with books because I'm not going to spend 30 minutes trying to pronounce someone's name. They just become Steve or I take their first and, and you first don't initial, need to if it's you know? in your head, right? It's right, right. <laughs> it's it's when they make your favorite book into a TV show and then they say the name and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's so like like at some point, like whenever I hear the name or hear someone else say the name, I immediately switch it to that pronunciation. 
And like from then you pick on it up out, quick. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's perfect after that. But up until <laughs> then, it's like a, a, a perfect example, like is Dritzed from the um, uh, Forgotten Realm series, the Icewind Dale trilogy. So when I was reading that, Dritzed was Dan. I had the hardest time saying his name in my head. <laughs> I even tried to pronounce it out, out loud a few times, and I could not. I, I, and, and you said so Dan? Yeah, I, I was like, all right, from now on, your name's Dan. And like, so mentally, as I was reading the books, I went through like book four, book five, or whatever it was. And I was like, all right, so Dan killed these two guys with his two scimitars, and Dan, you know, did all these things. And I was like, man, Dan's a badass. I love Dan. My favorite books of all time, or some of my favorite books of all time, love that shit. And then I watched an interview with uh, Ari Salvatore, and he says Dritz. And I was like, oh, all right, Dritz, that's his name. And from now on, I've been able to say his name, oh, Dritz. And I, it drives me crazy when I hear those people go, oh, his name is Drizitz. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's Dritz. <laughs> or, or Dan. Drizitz. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the kind of thing that that I'll do. I, I definitely will sometimes like leave a letter or, or a syllable out when reading something quickly and not realize it. Um, I think it's like a low level dyslexia. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. I, but I don't turn I, him into Dan. <laughs> You've gone too far. <laughs> all right, we're gonna wrap this up. Anyway, all right, mm-hmm. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know, man. Uh, that, good, good show. Uh, way to go, everybody. Keep going. Um, win the war. Do do the things and uh, fly your fleet carriers. Stay loose. Stay screwy. Yep. So I do have a cheese for the week. You nice. ready? Yes. Because uh, so Saturday's July the fourth. That's Independence Day, and um, uh, I love this country. We have our problems. I'm not going to say we don't. But I love this country. No, cheese is and not one of them. American is the shit. And <laughs> American hoo- cheese product. Hoorah, American cheese, especially like the craft processed cheese. You know, like like just the absolute worst possible cheese that can be for you. That's the cheese I like. So bring well, on think, the. Uh, <laughs> I think the idea is technically it's not cheese, right? It's it's processed cheese product. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's okay, fine. Okay, I mean, whatever. Okay. It's edible. Do you remember, like, way back in the day, like, Frito used to make these tiny little cans of nacho cheese, and I guarantee you they stopped making them because at some point they're like, eh, this shit gives you cancer. <laughs> when I get cancer, that's going to be why. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, don't, I, can't, I can't speak to that, I guess, but oh well. <laughs> I, I hope you don't get cancer, I guess is what I'll say. <laughs> no, I hope I don't either, so... <laughs> Anyway, so um, anyway, so that's that's gonna be the show. We're done talking. Um, mm-hmm. uh, loose <laughs> Screws ED. Be- that's the best ending. Okay, let's go with that. Yeah, <laughs> Loose Screws ED. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. We're done talking. Yep, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. See you guys right. next time. Horrible way to end the show, but whatever. We don't have chigger to, to cheesy. Stay cheesy. Whatever. Bye, y'all. <laughs>